My 28 female and my husband 30 male welcomed our first baby almost a few months ago. Understandably, it's been a huge adjustment for both of us. She's still not sleeping through the night and we're both back to work full time. We've always split the household responsibilities 50-50. We help where needed and it's always worked out well. Lately, my husband has been doing the chores terribly and I've had to come behind him to fix things or clean them again. For example, he cleaned the bottles the other night and they were cleaned so poorly that I had to clean them again. He dropped pump parts down the disposal and then ran it, ruining them. There have been several clothes that he didn't clean after a blowout and now they're ruined. There are many more instances like this. I've confronted him a few times, letting him know we all make mistakes and I know we're both tired, but it feels like he's not even trying to do things well. He keeps saying he's so tired and has a hard time working and caring for the house and baby. I sympathize with this as I'm also working, pumping, recovering and caring for the house and baby. The final straw was when he told me to go to sleep and he'd put up the milk I'd just pumped and finished the dishes. I was so grateful until I got up and realized the milk had been sitting on the counter and at this point it was no good anymore. He said he was sorry and he put on a show to relax for a bit before doing the dishes and fell asleep. The next day I decided to cancel all of our streaming services, PlayStation Plus and theme park passes to hire a housekeeper. I figured if he's too tired to do basic household chores, then a housekeeper is necessary. If he's too tired to put milk up, then he's too tired to play video games or for us to go to a theme park. We still have cable and PlayStation games and can do other activities outside of the local theme park. He blew up at me and said I had no right to do that. He was furious. I thought I was doing us a favor so we could get more sleep and not worry as much about household tasks. So am I the idiot for cancelling all of our streaming services to hire a housekeeper? Edit to add, I've been communicating non-stop about my needs and my expectations. I've let a lot of mistakes slide because I know this is hard for both of us. But when it becomes a daily thing, I let him know that if he's unable to do his part, then I need additional help. I mentioned hiring some help and he laughed and said, what a ridiculous waste of money. I knew if I asked again, the answer would be no. So I made the decision for both of us. Also, I didn't throw away the TV or PlayStation. I just cancelled our subscriptions for them. We were paying around $100 between the two. Our internet includes a handful of cable channels and Peacock, and we have plenty of PlayStation games that we can still play. We both play video games and watch TV. I probably watch more on streaming, so cancelling them affects both of us. Housekeeping is $300 a month, and everything I cancelled, including Disney passes, is about $230 so it won't be as much of a financial burden. Plus, it will save more money since I won't have to replace the damaged pump parts, clothes and breast milk. OP, you should have discussed this as a couple and come to this decision. Cancelling everything was a power move to punish him for making mistakes. If it wasn't, why did you just do it without talking it out first? I gave in to a nanny even though I didn't think I needed it, but at the end of the day, it was for my wife's sanity. You have to work as a team. Get through the next six months somehow and you'll be golden. You are the idiot, sorry. You've entirely missed the point. She's discussed this with him. His response, but I'm tired. This means that he's abdicated his responsibility to come up with a solution as a couple. That was his power move, telling her that it was her problem to figure out, which she did. Oh, and he didn't think they needed a nanny. I'm guessing that's because he wasn't doing anything around the house or pulling his weight with childcare. Definitely not the idiot. Your husband can handle you making an inconsequential executive decision about streaming services to hire the essential need of a housekeeper for your health and your baby's health for a few months to get your bearings. Saying cancelling TV shows is a power move to punish her husband? Ah, you mean a grown man who can't put breast milk away and make sure his child's bottles are clean so the baby doesn't get sick? JFC, it's not like she sold his car. I'm a 19-year-old mom to my beautiful toddler daughter, Amelia. Backstory, last year I was asked to be a bridesmaid in a family friend's wedding. I was thrilled and immediately said yes, even though it was a child-free event. I'd arranged for a babysitter, but about a week before the wedding, she informed me that she would no longer be in the city and couldn't watch my daughter. Given the short notice, I approached the bride. I asked if I could bring Amelia to the wedding as I didn't have time to find another trusted babysitter. My daughter is a very easygoing baby. She's comfortable with people and happy as long as she's fed. The bride knew this since she'd watched my daughter on multiple occasions before and she happily agreed, saying that having Amelia there would make the wedding photos even more special. 
The wedding was going smoothly, though I noticed a few stares from the groom's parents. Amelia stayed with my sisters for most of the day. Still, I took her with me during the reception to congratulate the couple. As I approached with Amelia in my arms, the groom's mother suddenly commented, You shouldn't have brought a baby to a child-free wedding, especially when she doesn't fit the family. I was completely taken aback. For context, my daughter is mixed. I'm half white and half Hispanic, and her father is black. I've been called whitewashed because I'm not in contact with my Hispanic family, so I knew exactly what she meant by saying my daughter didn't fit the family. The bride looked shocked, and the groom immediately stood up and led his parents away. Taking this as my cue, I decided it was time to leave. I made the rounds to say goodbye to everyone and put Amelia in her stroller. As I left, the bride came over to apologize for her in-law's behavior. I was upset but knew it wasn't her fault, so I simply wished her luck and left. Now, about a week after the wedding, I got tagged in a Facebook post. Strange, because I don't use Facebook. The post read, I'm outraged that my grandchildren weren't allowed at this event, but when a teen mother who couldn't be responsible enough to leave her child with a father brings her baby, it's perfectly fine. The post was from the groom's mother. To make things worse, she's also been telling family members that I'm lying about what she said regarding my daughter's appearance. So now I'm wondering, am I the idiot? Oh, not the idiot. I opened this thinking I might vote differently. It's not cool to just swan into a child-free wedding with a kid, but you had responsibly made arrangements that fell through, then correctly asked for permission to bring your daughter. That permission was generously given by the bride. It was not the groom's mother's place to decide who could and who could not attend. Given the nasty thing she said that day and the drama she is so determined to stir up online, it's obvious that the groom's mom is the idiot in this situation. You did your best in a rough situation. She, on the other hand, only seems able to do her worst. Probably one or more of the grandchildren is a holy terror, and it was easier to say child-free than, no, Bobby is not invited. The last family event he went to, he bullied the toddlers, he peed on the cake because it wasn't chocolate. The fact that she took such offense that her grandchildren weren't invited tells me that it's probably not the first or last time. I'm a 39-year-old female, a wife and mama of three, tween male, pre-tween female, and kindergarten age female. My husband Joe is one of three boys. His parents have a vacation home in Hawaii and every year they invite the kids, the in-laws and grandkids for a week-long family vacation. Some context is that Joe and his brothers were all competitive athletes and loved playing sports and games on family vacations. My in-laws encourage this with the grandkids. There are currently seven and are always trying to get them to play sand soccer or football on the beach. My son and younger daughter love the games and being in the water, but my middle daughter, Julia, is different. Julia is smart and creative, but she's also a sensitive and introverted little girl. She has friends at school, but isn't eager to play with her male cousins because they don't have as much in common with her. Julia and her friends at school love playing pretend. They've created an entire imaginary world and putting on shows. We now have her in theatre and ballet. My four nephews and the other two kids aren't interested in these activities and enjoy running around and playing sports all day like Joe and his brothers did when they were kids. Julia, for whatever reason, seems to have a different personality than the other kids in the family. My daughter is also a huge bookworm and is completely hooked on the Goosebumps series. When I say hooked, I mean she spends almost all her free time reading these books and begs me to take her to the bookstore to buy more frequently. She loves telling me about the book she's reading and has even started writing her own Goosebump stories before bed. I'm happy that my daughter loves to read and is so creative, and I encourage her to pursue these interests. She's definitely a bit quirky compared to my other two. Still, she's being herself and pursuing her own interests, which I love. We got to the island on Thursday night, spent all day Friday and Saturday on the beach, and are going to the pool today. Julia plays with her cousins at the house and talks to them at mealtimes, but during the day, she just wants to sit next to me and read her books. I've encouraged her to swim for a little bit since we're in Hawaii, and she goes in the water for a few minutes, but then she asks if she can get back to her book. She's played a few games with her cousins and siblings when I coax her, but again, she honestly just wants to be reading Goosebumps. Overall, when we're at the beach, I'd say she spends one-fifth of the time playing and four-fifths reading. She would spend the whole time reading if I didn't encourage her to try other things for a little bit. My husband doesn't see an issue with Julia spending the days reading. He says we're on vacation and it's about her having fun. He said if she wants to read on the beach all day, it's her decision and she's at least getting some sun, having a blast and enriching her mind. 
I agree, although I wish you'd swim a bit more since we're in Hawaii and also spend more time with the other kids. This morning, before breakfast, my mother-in-law pulled my husband and me to the side and asked if we were going to let Julia bring her boat to the pool today. My husband said yes, and my mother-in-law asked us to reconsider. She said the trip was about family and that Julia had created memories with her siblings and cousins. I told my mother-in-law that Julia is very introverted and that she bonds with the other kids at the house, during meals and for a bit at the beach, but she doesn't need to be running around with them 24-7 to create happy memories. My mother-in-law then accused us of spoiling Julia, encouraging her to be antisocial and teaching her that her desires are more important than being part of the group. My mother-in-law also says her obsession with goosebumps is unhealthy and that Julia isn't interested in talking about anything unrelated to fictional stories and characters. She does talk about goosebumps a lot, but my mother-in-law is exaggerating a bit. This set off my husband and he said that Julia has friends at school but has different interests than her cousins and siblings. He said he wants her to enjoy her vacation and if that means reading all day, then he supports it as long as it doesn't impact the rest of the group. The convo ended with me telling my mother-in-law that Julia could bring her books to the pool and that I wouldn't force her to spend her trip doing things she wasn't interested in. My mother-in-law and father-in-law have spent the entire breakfast scowling at me and my husband. At one point, Julia started telling my mother-in-law about her favourite Goosebumps book and my mother-in-law said she wasn't interested in hearing anything else about Goosebumps. She also said that Julia should talk about things that interest other people as well and Julia started asking her grandma about the books she liked and tennis. My husband told his mum not to parent his child in front of everyone and it was very awkward. We're about to head to the pool and I'm letting Julia bring her books, but I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. I'm trying to find a balance between letting her enjoy the trip and also being part of the group. Am I the idiot for ignoring the wishes of my mother-in-law? Let her be herself. She's introverted. Being part of the group is a bit much for her, so she reads her book. Good to see your husband isn't a mommy's boy and is standing up for his child. Not the idiot. Please don't ever leave your little girl alone with your mother-in-law. Her dismissal of her when she tried to talk to her about something she was excited about was just plain cruel. Grandma will soon long for the days her grandkids want to talk to her. Oh, I don't like your in-laws. Do you know how hard it is being an introverted kid and being forced to socialize, even with your family? It's so hard. Tell Julia she's a rock star for how she accommodated Grandma's request for a topic change instead of making it awkward. That shows a lot of maturity and thoughtfulness on her part, OP. My wife Anne and I have been married for 13 years. I'm 43 and she's 46. We do not have children. When we first began dating, nobody could make me happy like Anne. She always seemed to know exactly the right thing to say when I was down. But over the past decade or so, she's really started to show her true colours and a lot of what her ex-husband said to me about her has begun to make more sense. For example, I have a very high-stress job. People bring me problems and I fix those problems. But when I get home, nine times out of ten, Anne just has more problems to throw onto my plate. She doesn't work, so she's free to do anything she wants to solve said problems during the day, but lately she's even begun making lists of things she wants me to do after I work all day. But my biggest issue with Anne is that I can't ever really open up to her about anything. Whenever I talk about something bad that happened to me, she'll either try to one-up me or agree with the person who wronged me. Last Friday, I had a horrible day. There was an enormous problem at work that basically all fell on my shoulders to solve. When I was crossing the street after work, I had a green signal and a bicycle blew through a red and side-clipped me. The cyclist yelled expletives at me and then rode away. I thought about calling the police because it was technically a hit and run, but there was probably nothing they could do. When I got home, desperate, I talked to Anne about what happened. She listened and then immediately took the cyclist's side. I reiterated that the cyclist ran through a red light, to which she responded that cyclists aren't obligated to stop. When I told her she was wrong and tried to put the issue to rest, she began frantically googling laws. She found that in our state they can treat lights like a stop sign. She began triumphantly reading the law to me loudly, word for word, getting louder when I kept trying to tell her that I wasn't interested. At the end of her spiel, she gave me this incredibly arrogant look as if she was right. I just stared at her for a second and said my life would be better without her. She got incredibly upset, shrieked at me until her voice was hoarse and then packed a bag and left to stay with her parents. She's texted me all weekend demanding an apology, but I haven't responded. 
Sounds like the problem is solved, actually. You said what needed saying and she left. Done and done. Be glad the trash took itself out. This has been a very unhealthy relationship for a long time. Do you need help on the first steps for contacting a lawyer or something? Otherwise, it sounds like you got her out of your house with minimal effort. Absolutely. It's clear this has been building for a while. Good riddance, honestly. She sounds exhausting, always needing to be right. Her leaving might be a blessing in disguise. She sits home all day as a stay-at-home wife, almost like she's scheming on how she will correct her husband when he comes home this evening. She's got nothing else to do but tell him off. OP has said what must be said, this is the beginning of a better life. As long as he follows through, of course. 